reading formulas. <clears throat> so in, you'll notice that throughout the book, there's a ton of formulas, okay? And formulas are honestly a shortcut. They're not a bad thing. They're actually a good thing. I would prefer a formula over a page of context and information. Okay, so now the question is, do you know how to read them? Okay, because formulas are actually going to give you relationships. So let me just write this other formula here, which is weight equals food over exercise. OK, so I really like to eat. I, I mean, <laughs> all of us really like to eat. Uh, and it's always funny when someone tries to say we have things in common. We both like to eat or it's kind of like, well, who doesn't like to eat? Right. But anyways, so weight equals food over exercise. And this is a formula you probably have never seen before. And I'm sure this formula exists. OK, but for me, I made it up. All right. But if you know how to read this formula, you can extract the relationship from it. So when you read a formula, draw an imaginary line where that fraction is. Just draw an imaginary line there. And that imaginary line divides the formula into a top and a bottom. You have a top portion of the formula and a bottom portion of the formula. And then you have these equal signs that separates, you know, the left from the right, basically. So you draw that imaginary line, top and bottom. If you're on top, you are directly related. And what does directly related mean? It means you will behave the same way. If one goes up, the other one goes up. If one goes down, the other one goes down. So directly related means it will behave the same way. If you're on the bottom, you are inversely related, which is the opposite of directly. And bottom is the opposite of top. You know, so if we're if we're on the opposite side, then things should be the opposite. OK, <clears throat> and that's a very common theme with a lot of things in ultrasound physics. If you know one part of something, you can then just apply the opposite rule and just say, well, if the other thing is the opposite, then, then everything else must be the opposite. And I'll point that out as I go through different concepts um, for the next three to four weeks. <clears throat> All right, so if you're on top, you're directly related. If you're on the bottom, you're inversely related. And what, is, what does inversely related mean? It means you will behave the opposite way. So if one goes up, the other one would do the opposite. It'll go down. Or if one goes down, the other one would do the opposite. It'll go up. So let's just look at this. If I eat more food, I gain more weight. Okay, directly related. If I eat less food, I would lose weight. Okay, directly related. They both behave the same way. And for inversely related, now here's the trick. I'm not referring to these two things being inversely related. Okay, these two things are not inversely related. What's inversely related is always the result. So whatever is on this equal sign, on this equal sign, that's what gets um, affected. Okay, not this guy right here. Because I can exercise more. But that doesn't mean I will eat less food. I can choose to eat more food. It, they're independent of each other. You know, I can do whatever I want. They're two separate things. So what gets affected is the result. If I exercise more, I lose weight. Or if I exercise less, I gain more weight. OK, so that is the relationship. That is how you read a formula. Now let's relate this to ultrasound. Wavelength equals propagation speed divided by frequency. I'm going to draw an imaginary line. I have my top from my bottom. My top is directly related. My bottom is inversely related. So what does this mean? It means that if my propagation speed goes up, so does my wavelength. Or if my propagation speed goes down, so does my wavelength. Or if my wavelength goes down, so does my propagation speed. It can go either way, OK? They're both on top. They're going to be directly related. Now the bottom one is inversely related. So if my frequency goes up, my wavelength would have to go down, meaning it gets smaller, it gets slimmer, 
Or if my frequency goes down, my wavelength would have to go up. Okay, so formulas are there to give you the relationship. That's it. There's really no math involved. It's always just relationships. And you'll see that a lot when you do practice questions. They'll say your frequency went up or your frequency went down or your depth went deeper or shallow. It's very like general terms. Sometimes they'll give you numbers, but it's mostly this general concept of higher frequency, lower frequency. They don't say, you know, 15 megahertz versus three megahertz. You know, sometimes they'll throw that in there, but it's more about just that general concept of something being bigger and something being smaller. So when you know relationships, you can easily knock the, excuse me, when you know the formulas and how to read them, you can easily knock those things out. And I can prove that this relation, this formula here is true. So frequency is tied to a one second interval. Okay. I obviously I cannot draw one second. Second is a time unit, so I can't just draw one second. Um, but let's pretend that each of these lines is one second. So let's just pretend this is how this is what one second looks like. And in this in A, I'll do this. OK, so if I wanted to know my frequency here, I will count my number of cycles. So I have two cycles. And let's say that in B, I do this. And my frequency here is one, two, three, four, five. So my frequency in B is five. So if I were to say which one is a low or high frequency, A will be my low frequency and B would be my high frequency. I have more cycles in, in B. <clears throat> so look what happened here in terms of the wavelength. The wavelength is the measure of the beginning of the cycle to right when the cycle will repeat itself, which is right here. That is my wavelength. And in B, the same thing, the beginning of the cycle to the cycle repeats itself. Look how my wavelength is bigger here than it is down here. And there go there shows that inverse relationship where the frequency is lower in A, but the wavelength is bigger. And in B, the frequency is higher, but the wavelength is smaller. And the way I like to, to teach this is you're limited to one second. So if you want to fit more cycles into that one second, you have to squeeze them in there. You don't stretch them out. If you stretch them out, they take up more space. So if you want to fit more cycles in there, you squeeze them in there. And when you do that, what happens when you squeeze something in? It gets slimmer, it gets tighter. And that's why my wavelength becomes smaller because I, I'm making it tighter, I'm squeezing more in there. Okay, so the formula tells you that just by reading it. Instead of drawing all of this out and, and trying to explain it, I could just say, hey, know the formula and know how to read it. And that's it, you know, so please be grateful for formulas because they really just give you the, the relationships flat out. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to guess it. As long as you know certain formulas, you can just forget about memorizing the relationships. Just write out the formula and read the relationship from it. Does that make sense to any to everyone or is there something in, somewhere where I lost you? Talk to me. It's good. Makes sense. OK, it, it makes sense. It's just that when you was pointing out um, you went from wavelength to frequency, I see how I mean, I see what you was pointing out how, how long the, the wavelength would be, but I was mm -hmm. concerned about the frequency. You didn't point out the frequency. You just said it went up or down, but how do you know? OK, let me see if I, if I still have it here. Well, look at my frequency as my number of cycles. I have two cycles here, so I wrote my frequency as two. Oh, OK. And in B, I have five cycles here, so I wrote my frequency as five. Okay. And if I compare two and five, well, this one is higher and this one is lower. So that's how I made one higher and lower. OK, gotcha. OK.